has been kind of involved in the area, but it's never, it's not quite regular, it hasn't been sustained, so we're looking again at the possibility of looking at uh, developing relations and seeing if we can do joint uh, research on this area. And it comes at an opportune time that we're going to be having uh, Dr. Jan Yuan, who is the director of the IWEP Institute for World Economics and Politics, and that pretty well defines what they're doing. They are under the umbrella organization of a prestigious government organization, the CASS, which is the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, which is a network uh, of um, social science academies as well as government organizations, which provides the intellectual capital. It's one of the, one of the think tanks that provides intellectual capital for China and for the understanding of China by other countries, which is why uh, Dr. Zhang will be talking about China and the world economy. Uh, he's been kind enough to set his slides in advance, and I think you, you will find yourselves quite enlightened by his presentation. Uh, Dr. Zhang has had a PhD in economics, master's in economics, and as you can guess, his expertise is in the institutional economics and the international political economy. He has published books, uh, and he has papers as well on the nature of state owned enterprises. Uh, he has done some empirical work on the interest groups and the JL theorem, as well as the nature of money and monetary cooperation in Asia. So he is not only a China expert, but he has also had some exposure to the rest of the world, uh, which tells us a little bit about the kinds of activities that have been going on in, in China. Uh, he's, in, in, in the past, he was with the Ministry of Commerce, he's the president of China's Highness Society of the World Economy. So, uh, may I present uh, Dr. Zhang Yuan, who will, who will make a presentation entitled uh, China and the World Economy, in China in the Global Economy and China. Thank you, Raj. Please welcome Dr. Zhang.
the trend of China's economic long-term growth. So we use the word new normal. And then <coughs> finally, I I am going to you know, talk about the one mile by the initiative proposed by a President Xi uh, two years ago. So I have only uh, four or uh, thirty or forty minutes, so I will be very you know, brief. Global economy. When we, we, we you know, uh, talk about global economy, we, we have to you know, uh, uh, see that the world is under the pressure. And the pressure, the world grows is under pressure. So look at the figure. Uh, we can see that the growth rate uh, of different parts of the world. Uh, uh, the United States and European Union, uh, all the economies put together, and the emerging developing economies. Also, the ASEAN, ASEAN 5, ASEAN 5 and the, uh, the Philippines, the bottom. And then the world average. All, all of the, the parts of the world uh, grew at a slower rate. Uh, rate. Of course, China, China's economic growth rate is slowing down. But uh, compared to other other parts of the world, China's economic growth rate is uh, oh, among the highest. Uh, when we, we 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 try to uh, explain why the world economy is uh, uh, entering a phase of uh, slow economic growth, there are a uh, uh, you know, conclusion made by by uh, PIS, a kind of international settlements. According to their uh, studies, the the say that today's world is facing a so-called risky trinity. This risky trinity contains the three parts. Number one is a high debt. Uh, number two is a low productivity growth. And the number three is a limited policy. Uh, the major economies today almost are almost exhausted there. Their, their policy, you know, uh, instruments. So everybody knows that. Uh, I, I don't want to you know, go through uh, this in detail. The, the number two, the, the, the part two uh, of my presentation is about China. Uh, from this figure, we can, we can see the you know, microeconomic indicators of China uh, through years. Uh, real GDP growth in uh, 2011, 9.5%. But uh, this year, it, it, it declined at a rate of 6.6, so 3 percentage points loss. So that's why people talk about China's economic trend. Then they worry about China, China's uh, 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 economy by saying that maybe someday in the future there will be a hard landing, uh, uh, even worse, China's economy may corrupt or something like that. I, I, I'll explain later how China's economy grows trend. And uh, also, there are many, many other, other indicators. Total domestic demand, consumption investment, uh, uh, including fixed and uh, inventory, and the net response. So what I'm going to emphasize is, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, you know, net Exports. China's uh, uh, net exports, the China net exports contribution to the economic growth is declining. People used to say that uh, China, China has based uh, its economic growth on two engines. Number one is the investment, the other is the exports. But uh, gradually, uh, net exports contribution to China's economic growth uh, become, you know, uh, become uh, 
the less the less uh, uh, important. Uh, last year, uh, its uh, contribution uh, uh, was negative. And this year, it's even worse. Uh, from this figure, we can we can see uh, the other other indicators regarding China's long-term economic growth, labor market, labor market. The, 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 the number is the, the un unemployment rate. Unemployment rate this year, that's something wrong this year, sorry about that. Uh, this year's uh, unemployment rate is around 5%. 5% is a tolerable the figure. It, it, the government target, target figure is around 5%. 5% So it's fine. And the, the, the trend is also, you know, uh, good 5%. So the, the reason behind this figure is that the supply of uh, lab, uh, labor supply of China uh, in the coming five years will be decreased, will be decreased dramatically. According to an uh, estimate made by a uh, Chinese economist, that from period of uh, 2010 to 2020, uh, the, uh, the number of labor supply in China will be reduced by 30 million. By 30 million. This is also this is also uh, the uh, one of the fundamental reasons uh, for the phenomenon. Why China's labor costs increased dramatically in the past uh, ten years? Uh, you can you can see that the wages increase uh, very fast, very fast. And uh, uh, inflation, inflation. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a very you know very uh, you know personal. I am as I tell you, I'm. Happy to see the inflation uh, uh, number. CPI, uh, average CPI uh, during the past uh, five years has decreased. And uh, for the time being, this year, it's, uh, I think it's, a, it's a, it will be below 2%, 2%. Last year, we experienced a very slow level of inflation. Uh, this year, it's a, you know, it's a uh, pick up. The reason behind that is the, the rebound of uh, the, uh, the commodity prices, uh, as well as the uh, depreciation of the Chinese currency. Uh, now let me uh, uh, see a few words about China's financial financial market. But it it shows China's uh, exchange rate. Fluctuation. The real effective exchange rate last year appreciated very much, uh, and the nominal effective exchange rate appreciated also. Uh, this this is quite important. You know, some 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 people uh, are concerned with the future trend of Chinese currency uh, will be a uh, you know. Uh, 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 sharp uh, depreciation against uh, U.S. dollars. That, that will be, you know, a very uh, how to call it, uh, very important for its others and the importance both in China and the, the foreign foreign companies. Uh, I'm going to talk, talk about the China later. Now, microfinancial. Yeah. From from uh, this figure, you, you can see the, the, the domestic credit, uh, total social financing increase, and uh, also the house price. The many 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 figures. I I am not going to uh, talk about them in detail, but you, you can see uh, what I'm going to. Uh, uh, Size is uh, the household disposable income. 
uh, as a share of GDP. In the year of 2011, uh, the, the, the uh, household disposable income as a share of GDP was uh, less than 60%. But uh, this year, it will, will surpass, surpass 32%. Five five percentage points up. It shows that China's economic structure is improving. We are on the way to you know uh, to 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 uh, grow uh, mainly on on domestic consumption rather than exports. This this, this uh, figure tells us that China's uh, you know, fiscal fiscal position, fiscal performance of, of the government. The deficit deficit of Chinese uh, 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 government this year will be you know uh, minus three percent as a share of GDP compared to others. This this number is, uh, is I think it's quite so, uh, in order to keep, keep the economy to move at a uh, medium high level, the Chinese government this year decided to increase the deficit as a share of GDP from 2.5% to 3%. Uh, this is a uh, that. The, the, the last, this is the last, la, last figure. I, I, I not, uh, it's a, this, this figure shows the channels the balance of the payments. You can say current, current account balance. Uh, in the year of 2007, channels uh, current account surplus accounted for 10% of China's GDP. Uh, then, uh, uh, we, we, we were uh, criticized by, by our trading partners like the United States, and the European Union, and the, some ASEAN countries because we, we had uh, such a big uh, uh, current account uh, surplus. And uh, you know, uh, uh, at that time, we heard uh, uh, <laughs> you know, very open uh, word or term, rebalancing. rebalancing. It's a, it's a, a sort of you know target in China, but uh, now uh, China's economy in terms of uh, you know external balance is uh, improved. It is improving. Okay. We can from, from this figure we can see this year China's current account balance of surplus will be around two point four percent. Uh, and the national uh, uh, across official uh, reserves reserves this year will be three trillion three point two trillion U.S. dollars compared to uh, two years uh, two years ago uh, there there is a quite big uh, deduction or decrease in terms of. Uh, Girls' official foreign exchange reserves around uh, 500 billion US dollars decrease, but uh, but the absolute amount of China's girls' official reserves is still quite big, 3.2 trillion US dollars. As far as I know, uh, uh, the Philippines has uh, uh, 100. 30 billion US dollars for the reserve. Reserve. What? <laughs> good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, I'm very happy to see that figures. The Department of Finance. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So now, now, now let me move, 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 to, oh, move, move, move to the China's economic new normal. This is a, a buzz, buzzword in China. New normal. Uh, under uh, under the new normal, uh, there are many you know, elements. But here, I would like to highlight highlight two two uh, main meaning of, 
called for the new model. One is L-shaped economic growth stream. The other is supply science structural reform. Uh, there are many estimates. <coughs> estimates about China's economic growth trend. More than I'm at the Institute of Economics. The Institute of Economics is a, a recent institute of uh, our counterpart uh, under CAS. Uh, my institute, Institute of Foreign Economics and Politics. They have you know, uh, Institute of uh, Economics. There is a, a, a division of labor among different uh, research institutes uh, uh, under CAS. That institute uh, 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 focuses their studies on domestic uh, uh, economy, so that's why I, I yeah, present uh, the estimate uh, the, 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 in my book. And Cai uh, Fang is the vice president of, uh, of Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, and one of the leading economists. He uh, uh, made uh, predictions of China's long term economic growth like this. And uh, uh, Lawrence Summers, the former former U.S. Uh, Treasury uh, Secretary, he is uh, uh, you know more or less pessimistic about China's uh, economic growth. Uh, These are predictions from him. And uh, the last is a uh, U.S. National Intelligence Council. They published a, 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 a report. They report. Uh, uh, report uh, on on the world uh, uh, economic and political uh, situation. Uh, uh, the title, title is uh, 2030. And then also, no, I, I, I have to be quick. I will shift the economic growth. One, 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 uh, uh, I'd like to explain a little bit more. It's very important to, to, to under China's uh, economy. Uh, I, the, 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 the letter L, the capital letter L, uh, is con consists of two parts. One is uh, 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 vertical, uh, vertical. The other is a horizontal line. The vertical line here means the, the decline, the decline of China's economic growth But the decline is one thing, and the growth at a relatively high High growth street is another. So that's, that's the, the, the horizontal line means. Uh, there are many reasons, the many reasons to, to uh, explain why China's uh, economic growth will, will be you know, uh, uh, like uh, this, uh, I L shaped. Many, many reasons. Uh, depletion, uh, depletion of rural supply labors. Uh, surplus labors, I, I mentioned that a couple of years ago. And there's a peak of employment in manufacturing as a share of the employment results in economic growth more dependent on service industry okay, whose productivity is more difficult to increase. And then they decline the rate of return on, on investment and then the, uh, the, the economic approach in the technology frontier which necessitates Shift from technology import to indigenous innovation. In order to maintain the China's economic growth at a relatively or medium high level, the central government <coughs> carries out a number of policies. One is the labor market. The labor market. There are many policy measures to do it. Labor market. They improve the education system uh, and uh, encourage innovation by building an innovation driven economic system. There are many, you know, many policy measures. For example, increase investment in R&D. Uh, uh, the, the share of uh, uh, GDP, uh, R&D as a share of GDP last year uh, was 2.1%. By the end of uh, uh, 2020, that share will be increased in 2.5 percent. And also, we, we we try to you know let market play a decisive role in the allocation of resources. 
and then, of course, reform SOEs. SOE sometimes uh, is, uh, you know, uh, it, it make huge contribution to the China's economic growth, but at the same time, uh, there are, they are, they are problematic. Causing some some you know uh, some some, uh, some problems to the whole economy, and also we are trying to cut excess production capacity, which is closely which is closely related to to uh, China's one by one of the initiative, which try to you know, to, to to promote promote uh, uh, capacity cooperation with these uh, uh, countries along. The Belt and Road, and also on the basically the negative impact of the COVID time. China's COVID time uh, uh, today is quite high. It uh, <coughs> high COVID time is becoming one of the you know, most uh, 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 severe threat to to China's economic uh, stability. Also reform fiscal and taxation, uh, taxation uh, system. And now let, let me move on to, to the belt of the Jordan. I'm sorry, you know, you know, uh, two or three minutes for the uh, What is one belt kind of decision? I give you a very brief introduction. The belt of the Jordan initiative was first proposed by uh, China's president. 2013. Uh, the belt and the road, the Silk Road economic belt focuses on bringing together China, Central Asia, Russia, and Europe, linking China with the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean Sea through so Central Asia and the West Asia, connecting China with the South. East China, South China, and the Indian Ocean. So this is a, this is a, a, you know back. The the road they, they call it 21st century maritime Silk Road is designed to go from China coast to Europe through South China Sea and the Indian Ocean in by route, and from China's coast through the South China Sea to the South Pacific in the Africa. So this is uh, what, what the Belt and Road Initiative is about. And uh, the, the major contents of uh, Belt and Road Initiative are as follows. Policy coordination, facility connectivity, unimpeded trade, financial integration, and the people-to-people -people balance. There are four dimensions uh, we, which can, can help us to understand the Van Belt and Road. Physically, financially, institutionally, and the culture. Uh, because of the constraint of the time, I am not going to be elaborate respect. And then there is a, a hidden agenda. Some people, uh, you know, outside, they may uh, talk about uh, do you have a hidden agenda? Always you, 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 you say China, China, China sign that and up here, you, you are going to help others to, 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 to benefit, uh, to, to, to promote uh, the so called inclusive uh, growth, inclusive development. But uh, uh, do you have any other intentions politically or geopolitically? Uh, so I, 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 I see, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a natural. Some people are suspicious of China's intention. Uh, 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 now I, I, I'd like to, to say that uh, building up the one belt and road is not only in the interest of China, but also in the interest of the, the other uh, country along the, the belt and road. Uh, before before I, 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 I came. Came to, to the Philippines. The Philippines. I I did some homework to learn about uh, your economy. And uh, I I what I found 
I, I, I found many, many things. What I, uh, you know, interests me the most is that there is a huge, huge uh, room for us to cooperate. China is a good at, uh, you know, uh, build or construct, uh, good at constructing seaport, airport, railway, and, uh, you know, road, land road. We are good at it. At the same time, we, we have, uh, you know, Capacity, even in the over capacity in the industry of steel, cement, uh, coal, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, the Philippines badly need the improvement, the upgrading of infrastructure. For, for example, there, there is a huge, huge common interest. So this is what, 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 what I want to you know, emphasize. Here, and there are many, you know, many, many accomplishments or achievements made by by, by the implementing of by, by, by the initiative during the past past uh, two years. So this is the figure. And also, there are some some uh, and the projects uh, are planning are under construction. Uh, I, I think it. it in one word, I'm quite confident in order to improve the mutual benefits of uh, China and ASEAN countries in general, and China and the Philippines in particular, so we can, you know, achieve a lot by by, by implementing the one by one initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much.